I'm here. If you talk, well, oh, there we go. There's Wiley on the screen. <laughs> Good evening to you. So welcome everybody to yep. this uh, Cash Guy special on the Portugal Calling webinar here from expatsportugal.com. Lovely to speak to you, Wiley, from Wiley and Partners. You are the expert on buying and renting in Cash Guys. Good evening to you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. It's great to have you here. We're going to find out more about you and your company and, of course, Cash Guys tonight. But the first thing to say, or first thing to ask you, is how do you say it? I hear people saying Cash Guys with a sh on the end and Cash Guys. Uh, and I think often people don't know how to say it and they just kind of mumble the last bit. How, how should it be said, Wiley? You know, when I first moved here, I moved to a town called Monte Estoril. And I used to say Monte Estoril. Yes. And then nobody knew where I lived. And I said, well, if I'm saying it wrong, what, how do I pronounce it? And they said, Montreal. Of course. So it, 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 my S turned into an H very quickly when I first got here. And so I would agree that the Portuguese, maybe not the Brazilian, but the Portuguese way to say Cascais is to say Cascais. Okay, Cascais is for this evening. Is your dream home in Cascais? I think yours is. Uh, Wiley, how did you get to be there? Tell us a little bit about yourself before we get going and talking about the, I think it's actually a village, isn't it? Is it called a village? Cascais being a village? Yes. It no, seems no, like a village. It, it is, because it once is, you've been here long enough, you have, you can, you really do say good morning to people on the streets and in your neighbours are all part of your community. And I would say it's a village in your, in, it feels like a village. I don't yes, know if it's designated I, as a village. I think it does have a special designation. We'll come back to that. Your, your story getting here, I know you have some Swedish influence going on there. That's uh, Wiley Lundqvist, as we can see from the street, <laughs> and American as well. So tell us a bit of, about yourself uh, before we get going. Um, I, you know, I think I grew up going to open houses with my mom and it was just the thing you did you in the newspaper would come and you'd circle the open houses and you'd go and there the garage sales and we'd spend our entire weekends doing that. And I think it led me to just always being infatuated by housing. So it was as soon as I could, I got my real estate license in the United States in Connecticut. And then I moved to Sweden and took a five year break from Sweden and went back to California and got my real estate license there. Uh, and then moved back to Sweden. Um, and had a different business in Sweden, but it was always just a passion of mine. So when I retired in 2018 and came to Kashkais, I did the ladies at lunch for the first two years and it, it kind of, it's, yeah. So anyway, I started working uh, and um, recognized very quickly that the expat community is so large and there's so many Americans where when you understand how to do business or transactions, real, real estate transactions in the United States, it's easier to help Americans understand the differences because you understand what they come with. Oh, yeah. um, so it's been really well. It's, it's worked out really well. It's been and, so much fun. And here you are trading as Wiley and partners in that area. And what, what, so Kashkaish, of course, uh, people will know, it's, but it's not the only part or area that you deal with. What's, what's, what's your, your scope mm -hmm. over that way? No, and I think that once you get here, because people don't really understand where Kashkaish starts and stops. Yes. So the first thing I do with my clients is I take them to the top of the mountain in Sintra and I go, look. And they're like, it's tiny. So mm -hmm. there are these tiny little, let's use your word, villages that kind of all back to back each other. So you can go as far, I mean, in a car from here to, Astrid, would you agree, from here to Lisbon is probably 20, 25 minutes in a car? Oops. What? Um, you, you're there? You're good? If, if the uh, A5 is running pretty clear, I think you can <laughs> And a little bit longer on the marginal because it's not as fast. But I mean, even... 15 minutes from here is still, I mean, when you, when you circle on idealistic, you know, cash cash estrel, you go all the way to San Pedro. And, um, you know, that's, that's a good 15 minutes or 10 minutes in the car from here, but it's, it's still estrel, which is kind of really cash guys. And then as far up to Malvera de Sara, so after Gincho beach, and you're hitting oh, yeah. all the way up to the hill. And then that's an area that's, they, they, they change the name right when you get up there, which is al Kabadesh, which is kind of behind us. Um, so it's really, it's, it's broad. It's yeah. deep. It's, yeah. a, it's a big place. Lots Thank of little you. villages. Yes, indeed. And I'm told Thomas tells, Thomas is here tonight, as is Anna, who lives in um, uh, Kashkaish, in case you didn't know. Anna, I'm sure we'll chip in and help her with any questions about, uh, we, we'll go with village because Kashkaish refused, according to Thomas, to be elevated to city status some decades back. Um, as they thought it would have a negative impact on its image. So that's a fantastic thing, for, a great claim to fame for Kashkaish. But if we could dwell on Eshtaro for a moment, um, great casino, James Bond connections. That's a fabulous part of, uh, of the, well, I, suppose I was going to call it a Lisbon suburb as well. It's kind of owned jointly by Kashkaish and Lisbon, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah and, and, and ama an amazing place that the James Bond uh, legend lives on. 
it's dated but it's there. <laughs> it's, when I told my mom I was moving here, she said, you know, I remember 50 years ago when I went to uh, the casino. And so when she came here, she's like, it's just like I remembered. Oh. So I think that it, uh, they went through a tough time in, in when we had to lock down for, uh, for COVID. I mean, it was months when those lights were just shut down, you know, and those lights are pretty iconic, you know, flashing all night long, but it was down for the count. And we didn't know if they'd open back up. Oh, wow. So they have, they do a lot of wonderful things and you can have shows there that you go to and there's two different places for shows. There's like a buffet like you'd have in Las Vegas. There's, um, and I mean, any time of the day that you drive past there, there's security guards outside and big black limos. I mean, people, it's a big deal. It's fun. Wow. It's okay. iconic. So what a wonderful patch you have over there uh, where, where, where you serve uh, clients, uh, a fabulous part of Portugal to be representing. What is it that you love about it especially? the people <laughs> the people okay they're great the portuguese are great like you can move to a lot of countries and feel like you have to count your change or they're not really interested or you know they they don't necessarily want you here but the portuguese are kind and they're they're lovely and they're they they're inclusive and it's a nice place to live. It's it's really a, a wonderful thing. Your neighbors will embrace you and, and they're curious and and yeah, they're good. They're good. And that's and then the weather is always the first thing to say, but that's almost a given. So I think I had to give a shout out to the people. And then the nature is over the top. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. And I love the fact that I can be in the beach uh, if I walk, you know, 10 minutes in that direction, or if I get in my car 10 minutes in that direction, I'm on top of a mountain. And the combination between the two of them is like, there's nothing you can't find. So yeah. those would be my answers. People it, is, it is quite amazing over there, isn't it? And, and I think it has quite a long history of, of having what you might call an expat connection, right? Because of the NATO or United Nations there. Joan's iPad, if we could uh, mute you, that would be great. Or if someone could help us do that. Joan's iPad. It's the, it's the age of artificial. There it is. There we go. I, the iPads are taking part on their own now. <laughs> but the UN or, or, or NATO are over uh, Kashmir? Yeah, okay. And, yeah. and what sort of effect does that have on the area? Well, I mean, they just built a, a big university next to the NATO area. It's a, a, it, There's so many NATO people here. So that, you know, there's, there's a kind of safety in numbers, if you will. Uh, but, uh, and they have this wonderful thing called the hash that they put on and they kind of engage everybody to come in and, and hang out with them. But wow. NATO, is a, it's, a, it's a cool presence. It's a cool space to have them here. It makes you feel safe. And we should point out the hash is a, a, a running race is of right. a kind, isn't it? Okay, it's a sporting activity, very inclusive, and people from all over the world are taking part in that, which reflects right. Kashkash's international, very international, and somewhat um, expat sort of status and, and vibe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. So, Wiley, what's been going on there property-wise? Uh, in the last couple of years, it's been challenging. Um, and then we have a, a more recent phenomenon, haven't we, of Ukrainian people coming and, and yeah. being given safe refuge in Kashkash, especially... Uh, what's that? What's going on? What's happened to the property market in these last couple of years with these various influences going on? Yeah, so I'd have to say that it was a when I first started it, and I was looking for you know someone would ask me to do a search for them, and I would look up and think this house has been on the market for over a thousand days, and there's never been a price drop. That's weird, hmm. you know. So I would talk to the seller's agent as I work as a buyer's agent for the most part, and and they'd say yes, and I'd say a thousand days. Like this house has been on the market for like three years almost. And they're like, yeah, in America, if your house is on the market for three months, it's a dead property, right? It's like no one, something's wrong. Yeah. Three years later, there was no price drop. So nobody was in a hurry. It was kind of a little manana experience and there was no pressure to buy quickly. Fast forward COVID and COVID happens and people want to get out of their small apartments and, and you know, high rises because they didn't know if they'd ever be able to go outside again. They want space. So the first thing that happened was the, the, the rental market increased. And then people were moving back into their summer houses and, and leaving town. Um, so Lisbon got quiet. And then it started bubbling more because there were more people coming in. And then the United States, maybe something called Biden Trump happened. And, and then people started coming here. Uh, okay. So there was an influx of the Americans. Even the first year of COVID, the property prices increased 12%. Um, but the rental market was still pretty, pretty okay. It was, you know, it was, it was a little bit more than normal, but there was still a ton of rentals on the market. 
And then COVID stops or, well, Peter's out. And then Ukraine happens. No, no, golden visa happened. Yeah. So golden visa happened and everything that was 400 became 500 and 500 became 600. And at the end of 2021, there was such a push to get the golden visa through the purchase program of the 500 that everything sold for 500 and I and, and 600. And even the millions were still selling like on the telephone because people were just desperate to get the visas. That's so fascinating, then, isn't it? So people, you, you might have a situation where somebody says, could you please put your property price up for me to 500 so that I can get a golden visa? It happens. What, what does the buyer say at, at that point? No, I couldn't possibly do that. That would be unethical. <laughs> exactly. You people say, yes, okay, go on then. Exactly what happened. And so I was telling clients, let's wait till February, March, because then it'll calm down. There'll be more properties that'll come out and it'll normalize. Yeah. And then Ukraine happens. Yeah. Right. And so then it didn't normalize. And so then everyone from Ukraine's coming in and not sure how long they'll be here. So the rental market is like, like there's nothing available. Like it'll come out in the morning. It'll be taken off in the afternoon. People mm -hmm. call and they'll rent it on, online. They don't even care. They just need to have some place to live. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the Ukrainian companies are coming in and saying to their employees, we'll double whatever you want to pay. So if someone wants to pay two thousand a month, they can afford four thousand a month which means if they had 5,000, they can afford 10,000. So like nothing is standing still. Everything from 1,000 to 10,000 is just flying. Yeah, amazing. I mean, you were saying this when we spoke last, that the right. rent rental properties of 10,000 a month in cash guys. People who've tuned in tonight will be thinking, I will never live, be able to live there possibly. <laughs> now, that's what we need to know. Um, you, you, we need to know about how you work as a buyer's agent. And if you can get a bit of a lever in there and help people who are tuned in uh, to find their home, they, you know, they, they've seen the place, they might have visited the place, thought that's where I want to be. Um, it's not out of the question, though, is it, Just despite all you've just said? No, no. As a matter of fact, I have to be very honest and say the last three deals, the prices were, I think I did it. There was a one six. We got it at one four. There was a one five. We got it at one three. Uh, and and this, the story keeps going on like that. I even had a I had a seven and a half rental. I We bid six and a half and got it. So, you know, I think you really have to just trust the fact that people still, even in their heart of hearts, might know that their house prices are so inflated that, they, you know, it depends on the day you offer, if it's the right offer for the right person. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people go on their gut feeling with who the other human being is, and they just know that that's the person they want to live in their house. That's so, interesting. And, and by having a buyer's agent, having you work on somebody's behalf, um, you can be in there saying this sort of thing and getting that sort of deal, right? You get a really, yeah, I, I do. Because the thing with me as an independent is when you work for the larger corporations, you don't go in and start asking for a lower price because that drops your commission. But I don't have that issue because I'm not sharing with large corporations, right? Yeah. I don't work for a big company who takes a chunk of my commissions. Yeah. So I go in and, and ask for these numbers knowing I'm going to make less money, but it's better for my buyer. So, yeah. you know, why not? Yeah. So, I mean, if you protect your people, that's what you do. So that's, I think, the reasons that you can work in with someone also who protects you. Because if you work for the seller's agent, they're getting paid by the seller. You know, they, yeah. they're going to get paid either way. But you want someone who comes in and fights for you. Very good. So well, tell us more about how you do that then, how you, how you engage with people. What's the process like working with you? Well, I mean, I think that we would just we start with an initial phone call to see if we can work together. I mean, we might our personalities might clash. Your needs might not be something I'm capable of doing. And then I would see if I can refer you to other people. Um, and then um, we'll start with exchanging listings. So I have an understanding of what it is you're looking for uh, to see if that's uh, either something that I feel like I can help you with. And then we'll just I try to create like Google, Google Docs so we can like in real time go back and forth with the listings that we like. And if you're not here, then I will do a virtual thing, tour where you're on the phone. For those things, you would have to have a NIF number and a bank account because there's very little we can do without those two tools. Um, and then I've done deals over the phone where you know we have lawyers from different places helping us and, and that works. But if you're here on ground, which I prefer, I also prefer when people rent for a minimum of like three, six months to really know that the neighborhood you think you want to live in is actually the neighborhood you live in. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if they're different, right. and I think you need to find your space. So I very often ask people to start if they want Kashkai, start living on this side of Kashkai, closer to Ginsho, because that has its own vibe. Uh -huh. Maybe take a one month rental there, Airbnb. 
And then the second month, go over to the other side, Estrel, San Joao, and checking out that neighborhood to see what that vibe is. And then maybe taking another month rental back here. And after three months, knowing so much more about the community that you know exactly where you want to live. So there's no mistakes. So that would be the ideal. That's that's my, yeah, that would be my dream scenario. Yeah. But if someone rings you up and says, Wiley, look, I want to come over. Can you find me a place in, in Kashkai or nearby? Need, needs to be done. We need to crack on with it. You could do that as well. Yes. Okay, that's good to know. Any, any questions like that tonight, folks? Pop them in the chat, and uh, we'll put them to Wiley. I think you made a bit of a reference there to the the extended infrastructure, obviously, of buying a house. Uh, the name of the of the company is Wiley and Partners, which suggests you are connected to other professionals that enable the process. Right, and as a buyer's agent, you need to have that. So, in each one of the companies, the larger companies out there, um, I have a person who I trust and who very often will send me listings. You know, this is new on the market knowing that I have the buyers, uh, but I have the luxury of them calling me, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them call me first and say, this listing's new. Do you have anybody? Um, but those are my partners. Those are the people I work together with. So I feel confident knowing that I have someone in each company who, who looks out for me and vice versa. Very good. Um, so that that's really very helpful. So it's a nice right. setup. We, we may have frightened a little bit, uh, people a little bit uh, and uh, caused a little bit of anxiety about how the uh, prices are, are cooking at the moment. Um, of course, as somebody who knows the area and a skilled buyer's agent, you're aware of the areas that others aren't. Um, would you dare give us a few um, insider tips to uh, up and coming areas within your territory? Or uh, can, I, can, I, can I surprise that out of you tonight? Absolutely. Cool. Um, there are some, some areas that... that Normally, before, if we saw 5,000 euros a square meter, we would be like, oh, gosh, that's really, you know, that's high. Now we're, we're grateful to see 5,000 a square meter. But the other day, I saw a house for 3,000 a square meter, and it was so fairly priced. And I recognize that the neighborhood is just kind of coming up. Yeah. And I know realtors love to say the word up and coming as a sales technique. But there really are neighborhoods um, like on the other side of A5. I don't love a lot of them, but at the end of the A5, there's an area called Aldea de Juzo. Over there, there's Shanika. On the other side, there's Murchis. Those areas kind of back up to Sintra just a little bit. You can They're closer to the mountain than they are to the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, and those neighborhoods are definitely less expensive as we speak. Okay. Um, than they are in Kashkais. It's called Kashkais, so I mean, it's still Kashkais village, um, but they're just on the other side, but closer to Ginsho. And what most people don't know about those neighborhoods is it's literally one kilometer from Ginsho. So it is close to the water. It's just a different type of, it's not the coastline that we're all kind of used to. Yeah. So um, also there's an area that I think is really cool that um, if you're in an area called Bairro de Rosario, which is on the other side of Kashkais, if you will, on the marina going towards, um, towards north, um, then after that is an area called Gia. And right where Casa de Gia is, which is a cool place. So when you guys get here, you, oops, oh, okay. When you guys get here, you have to go there because there's a number of restaurants. That's a, it's a beautiful space. But if right there, there's a road that takes you up called Rua de Tor, so T-O-R-R-E. And just as you get right away from the bigger houses, there is a huge cemetery on your left-hand side. And across from that, there are tons of apartment buildings. And it's really where the Portuguese live. And then after that, another 500 meters, there's now multi-million euro homes. So they're yeah. multi-million euro homes, Portuguese apartments, multi-million euro homes. And I think that that block in between, if you can find a top floor there and blow out and have a you know an attic, you're, you'll have great views. Yeah, I was, gonna, like, I was gonna ask you about that because up and coming is one way of doing it, isn't it? It's, it's, it's to be a little bit out of town and wait for the, the tide to rise as it were. But also part. often there are hacks in prestigious areas, aren't there? Where it's a smaller property, but you're in an incredible location. So it sounds right. like you've got the best of both worlds there. Yeah, no, and, it does. Uh, and yeah. You've got, I know you've, someone you've who for covers. nothing got yeah. a top floor and then there was like an attic that he blew the ceiling out to and had all the skylights and he laughs every day because he can't believe he got it for like two three hundred you know and 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 well he got it for less but then he renovated for that amount of money it's amazing that's I mean, that's exciting and good to know um people often ask when we talk about property in portugal you know what's the what's the local authority like to work with in terms of these sorts of uh, what did you call it blowing out the attic how <laughs> easy how, e how easy is it to blow out your attic in cash guys I think it's easy. Um, sometimes you you say you there is a certain military term called don't ask, don't tell. Is that a military term? Um, 
<laughs> I couldn't possibly say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think sometimes it's better to ask forgiveness than to ask permission. That's one theory. The other theory is ask permission. Yeah. Because what you can do here is you can renovate as long as you don't alter the exterior walls yeah. and seemingly not structural walls either. Yeah. As long as you are doing some interior work that doesn't cost, that doesn't change the footprint of the house, that you can go and ask them just to legalize it afterwards. And that's a my neighbor just did it, cost him 2,000 euros, uh, and he legalized a guest house that someone else had built behind his house. But okay. all Kashkais is interested in is getting the documentation correct, making sure that all the paperwork is correct, and, and increasing the tax on that house. Because it's a larger footprint. Yes, yeah, so like a progressive rather than punitive approach to these things. Correct. So they, they're not going to tell you to take the guest house away. I, no. I can't say that for 100%, but I've never heard of yeah, that. Yeah, of course, of course. But as long as you just, you're, you're on the same page because you want to leave, you want to be right. You want to be correct. Yes. So then when you sell it, everything is correct. Yes. So uh, 2,000 euros was the process that they, that they paid for? Oh, 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 His neighbors oh. were so mad at him because they yeah. said, now that you've got eyes on you and you've legalized, they're going to have eyes on us. Yes. And he said, well, I'm, I'm very sorry, but this is a huge investment for me and I want to make sure it's correct. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of times the Portuguese don't want that because they don't want to highlight the fact that they've increased. They don't want to pay more property taxes. Well, that's understandable. Uh, yeah. But it is understandable, absolutely. But it's also difficult in the resale process. I get it. Swings and roundabouts there. Thank you for letting us uh, into that, uh, the, the possibility of, of, of renovation and expansion in a property. Amorera neighbourhood, is that part of your territory there? Or is Amorera a bit a bit further away from you? That's a, a question from Kent. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's two. There's one in Lisbon and there's one here. Yeah, OK. Amorera near you then. What do you reckon? I haven't spent any time there. OK. All right. And this is what I've noticed about you before. You won't you won't just give an opinion because you can. If you don't know it, you don't speak about it. OK, fair enough. Sorry, Kent. But uh, you can understand why we're not getting a, an answer there this evening. Um, we're renting seven minutes from Estoril in an A rated condo, but it's only A rated in the summer. That's cheeky, isn't it? <laughs> partial, partial rating. there. Surely that should be for the all the, On the energy people. certificate. Can't well, you let, let's find out. Is it common to, to have to retrofit houses? despite this being a new build, three years, and is so badly insulated, uh, not just for heat, but for sound. It's all just concrete. Yeah, what, uh, what do you have to say about that, about build quality? I've been experiencing a lot of that with the newer builds. Okay. I really have an affinity for the older houses and then doing the work on the older houses because the, the walls are like this thick on the older houses. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's harder to do the renovation on them because you have to break through a lot of that. But seriously, the new builds, uh, they're, they're going up pretty quickly. Yeah. OK. And um, you, well, what do you suggest to people who, who find themselves in a similar position into Dominic, where they're not entirely happy with the finish and they have to retrofit? It's so hard. It's so hard to tell people to put more money into a new build. It's, it's not a good conversation to have. Right. But nobody knows that going in because everyone believes it says A on the energy certificate. It's a new build. How bad can it be? Yeah. Well, quite. Yes. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you would want to believe it, wouldn't you? And not. Absolutely. Ask you yeah. And it's hard to suggest that even on a new purchase that you should have, a, you know, an inspection team come through because, my God, it's new. You know, what, yeah. what will they inspect? Yeah. But it, it's it's it, not a bad idea. OK, Lynn, thank you for asking. Uh, Wiley, are you able to share your contact details? Of course, uh, we have uh, wiley.lundqvist uh, at glimari.com. Um, and in our business directory, of course, and we'll make sure that the contact details are in the YouTube video, uh, which we will we will draw to a close now and conclude unless there's anything else you want to add, Wiley. I suspect some of the quieter billionaires uh, will want to be around in the second part of the conversation that isn't on YouTube to ask you questions about cash cash. Uh, anything else you want to add before we pause the recording there? Uh come and play with us it's fun okay here. come and play in cash guys that's a great invitation isn't it fantastic okay so for now thank you very much uh wiley of wiley and partners 